base camp. This is Charlie Six. Got eyes on big bad guy. Big black bad guy. Uh, he's wearing black. He's not black himself. He's coming this way. And I'm very scared. He's very bad. I think. Probably over. Hey. Is this you on the radio? It's time to level up those skills. All right, welcome back to Civil Defense Engineering, where we're equipping citizen militias to be resilient in 21st century situations. So today we're finishing up our little series on signals for small teams, especially using radios. And this episode is going to be about standard reports that you give over the radio. We've already talked about transec and comsec and the importance of maintaining those to cover your opsec. Today we're going to be talking about what standard reports, standard nets you're going to want to set up so that you are going to be communicating very clearly, concisely, and with the minimal amount of transmission time possible. And so Let's get into it right now. Roll the intro. So the first one is just your standard sit rep. So what's the sitch? And that obviously stands for situation report. It has various different types of formats you could go with. I saw several different examples. But the most common one I saw and the one that we have for our group is duplicated here for you. And, you know, as we go through this, you might not want to use the exact same formats for the, what I have here. You might want to tailor it a little bit for your SOP. And that's totally fine because some of them might be even clunkier than you need. But for situation report, what is what is the purpose behind it? Well. You have somebody that's monitoring your progress probably back in your base camp, your talk somewhere, um, and they want to know what the status of the mission is. So that's the main purpose of a sit rep is to give updates on the status of the mission. So you've already got your, you know, your your op ord or your your the mission plan in place. So this is what it distills down into your current location. And that could be a, an eight or ten digit grid square like the military uses. It could be a lat long. It could even be an address or some relative position to a known landmark. For line two, that's going to be your activities of the past 24 hours. And of course, this is only what is relevant to the mission. You're not talking about what you had. The MREs was terrible, you know, the living arrangements and the shelter. No, just obstacles did you encounter? What curveballs? What uh, did you have to do to accomplish that operation that you are working on? And then line three would be planned activities for the next 24 hours. Again, only what is relevant to the mission. Not chatty at all, just concise, simple language. Line four, casualties. Hopefully zero, but that is something that would be very relevant for your base camp to know about. Line five, ammo and equipment status. This could be an abbreviated LACE report, which we'll talk about later on, but how are you doing on ammo and your equipment? Is anything faulty, breaking down? They'll need to know that. Line six, enemy contacts and killed in action. And line seven, other intelligence. Again, try to keep it very high level, very specific, and only what is relevant to the mission that the base camp or commander needs to know about. Next is a jam report. Do you know what a jam report is for? Delicious jams and jellies. I think that the cyber domain is the most important and kind of hidden domain of the modern battlefield. And to tell you what I'm talking about, everything that you use on the modern battlefield requires communication. Here's your direct communication and uh, devices that you're using to stay connected with your chain of command. 
and your battle buddies. Then there's telemetry to drones. That's why drone jammers are such a big thing, or Wi-Fi jammers, so they can't see, can't do their recon. The jam report is going to be very important intel for your chain of command to know about. So here's how it works. Line one, brief description of the interference. That is, what type of interference were you seeing? Was it on your handheld? Was it, was it uh, when you're trying to fly a drone? Do they have Wi-Fi jammers? Line two, location where you detected the interference. Lines three and four would be roughly the start and end times that you noticed the interference. And if it's still ongoing, then there wouldn't necessarily be an end to the interference. It could just be ongoing. Line five, operational effects. Did this have a detriment to your operational capabilities on the battlefield? Were you, were you unable to get a message through to somebody critical? Or did you lose equipment as a result of this? Line six would be the frequency that you detected the jamming on. Line seven is the equipment you used to detect it. Maybe you've got an SDR for doing some SIGINT. Line eight would then just be a brief narrative talking about what happened and what, what you recommend doing about it. We should probably have uh, an episode about how jamming works and countermeasures for it, or how to do jamming yourself. That would be an interesting episode. Now, a lot of jamming activities are not going to be legal, strictly speaking, in a time of peace and ru rule of law, but uh, it is good to learn about how it works and be prepared to do it. But in, on a, from a high level, Jamming is basically transmitting at higher power than everyone else is. It's overpowering the antennas so that the lower power signals that have the information in them get drowned out in all the noise. It's kind of like trying to shout a message to somebody in a hurricane or, or a tornado. You just can't hear them. Check the transmission generator. A communications disruption can mean only one thing. Invasion. So a spot report is a very important type of report. Uh, you may have heard it as a salute report, and that's the acronym that it spells out. So this is if you have spotted enemy contacts and you are trying to alert your chain of command about what is happening. So line one, Sierra, that's the size of the enemy unit. Line two is alpha, that's activity of the enemy unit. What are they doing? Are they digging fighting positions? Are they um, advancing towards your position? Are they doing recon? Are they flying drones? Lima is the location of the enemy unit. Where did you spot them? Uniform, what are they wearing? Is it, you know, M81 Woodland BDUs like this? Or are they wearing t-shirt and jeans? or some foreign military's uniform? Do they have any distinctive insignia or cool morale patches like this YouTube one I have? Buy my merch. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not big enough to sell merch. So then uh, t Tango, that's your time of observation, because you may not be giving this report when you first saw them, because when you saw the enemy contacts, you're, you're too busy observing them, staying hidden, and you're not going to probably be radioing back your observations until later when you are in a safe position. Then Echo, that is the equipment they are carrying, what types of weaponry and other capabilities they bring to bear. And now it's important to be as specific as possible. Don't just say, oh, they all had rifles. Try to see what types of rifles they have, what types of optics, anything unusual you notice about it. Are they the painted rifles? Are they all black rifles? Are they, do they, you know, what stands out to you? And then line seven is narrative. Just a, everything else that you wanted to say, but didn't fit the format. Sum it all up in a little bow tie. And remember to keep it as objective as possible. You're not really giving your opinion at this point. Now you can kind of guide people one way or another by choosing to focus on specific details that you think are relevant. 
but you're not really giving your opinion about this necessarily. So your salute report shouldn't be very chatty or informal. It's very important that you communicate clearly what's going on. So don't be like that guy in the intro who is just freaking out. That's why you need to have a very laid out, rigid format for delivering this information. So here's probably how he should have given that report. Base camp, this is Charlie 6. Salute report, over. Charlie 6, this is Mobile 2 for base camp. Send it, over. Sierra, 1. Alpha, patrolling, camping. Lima, 2.7 clicks north of Spooky Old Tree. Uniform, all black uniform, black cap. Sporting cheap red dot, hand truck with camo netting, unknown contents. November. Recommend interdiction with QRF from north. Over. Mobile 2 copies, out. Let's get them. Then there's a contact report. Now, a contact report, it's kind of like a salute report, except you are engaged. They are shooting at you, and you don't have time to do a full salute report. So it's just like a one-liner, you know, base camp, this is Sierra 1, contact, brief description, and then the direction and distance to them. So just very simple. And when you have a free moment, tactically speaking. A nine line medevac. Now, our citizen militias probably don't have air evac capabilities, so this might be more focused on using trucks to med medevac people. But uh, I've given you the full nine line format here that the army uses. Might want to tailor this a little bit, but it's still relevant. You know, instead of landing zone, you could call it a loading zone. Just show you how it works here. So line one is location. Again, that could be a, you know, a military grid square or lat long or just call out land, landmarks. Line two, your, your call sign and frequency for this call. Line three number of patients and precedents. So are they red, yellow, black, you know. <laughs> Line four, special equipment required to get them out. You know, if this was, if this was a helicopter thing, you, they might need to have a hoist. But, uh, you know, for us, I don't know if you need anything for extraction, if they're trapped in a vehicle, I don't know, maybe Jaws of Life or something. Just any, any specific uh, equipment you want to make sure they bring. Line five, number of patients by type, and that is whether they're incapacitated or ambulatory. Now, you might think this is a little bit redundant from line three, but it's focusing a little bit on mobility rather than how bad they are, if that makes any sense. So, you know, you could be completely missing an arm and be a red, but you can still walk. You know, it's just getting at, do you need a litter or not? That kind of thing. It's a litter! It's a litter! <laughs> Line six, security at the LZ, the loading zone. Is the medivac team gonna expect to be shot at here, or is there pretty solid security with a perimeter intersecting lanes of fire. Just give a brief description of how dangerous the loading zone is. Line 7, loading zone marking method. This could be smoke, grenades, different colors, or strobe. Um, if you have anything like that, like an IR strobe, it could just be tape or just waving your arms, you know. Line 8, nationality and status. So is this friendly military casualty? Is it civilian, or is it a non-allied military, or civilian, or an enemy POW, because you're going to have different protocols for each of those situations. 
Line nine is going to be your terrain, obstacles, and NBC status. So are there any hazards that the medivac team is going to have to negotiate at the LZ? Our next type of report is a lace report, and that would be after an engagement to give your status on four very key areas. That's your liquid, that is how much water you have, ammo, casualty, and equipment status. So it's usually, it may not, it may not be a radio report, in fact, like it could just be your platoon or squad leader checking on each member after an engagement. You know, maybe you're, you've broken contact and regroup. This would be a perfect time for a lace report. And this is the format. Just go down the letters, Lima, green, alpha, yellow, Charlie, green, echo, red, maybe in this case, radio antenna broken, uh, something like that. So it's just very quick and just give a color to represent how, how much you have left. So those are the basic standard reports that you might want to work into your standard operating procedures. So for your action items, go ahead and record standard report formats in your SOP, tailoring it as needed, because like I said already, you know, the way the army does things is not necessarily how civilians are going to do things, but you should standardize them. That's the whole point of all this. And then two, practice, practice, practice. Maybe take take a whole FTX, a field training exercise to work these over. You know, you could practice salute reports, give people a scenario, even give them like, you know, some printouts of various different scenarios they could be looking at and practice giving a salute report. So that's all I had for you for this one. And that will conclude our radio procedures for small teams series. I might do one uh, appendix one on how to do a radio repeater and how to use one, how to build it and use it. And I think that would be kind of an interesting uh, cherry on top of this whole series. So that's been fun and stay tuned, subscribe for more. I do a video once every two weeks or so. And uh, this has been Charlie Delta Echo out.